93.9 WCCC. Lenny! Lenny! All right, Lenny, this is like a rock and roll name. Lenny Kravitz. Now, that's a rock and roll name. Or not. Lamont. That's a black man's <laughs> name. Lenny Kravitz doesn't look like the black man. Lamont name. Kravitz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an offspring before that brand new It's Defy You. Cozy and Kevin, the afternoon guy, but uh, we've been having special guest hosts. I'm never going to be able to say that properly. Special uh, guest host. Yes, and today it's uh, Scott Papacuri. Crack cocaine is one of the most addictive uh, and deadliest drugs. It's relatively easy to get and inexpensive compared to other stimulants. The academic we... That's epidemic. <sighs> the epidemic we now see is the result of the convenience of the drug. Crack is small, cheap, and easy to hide. The consequences of crack go far beyond the physical deterioration of the user. Families, communities, and society are all affected. The criminal manis... The criminal manifest... <clears throat> the f*** is word! The correct pronunciation is manifestation. The criminal manifest... What the f*** is it? Manifestation. The criminal manifestations of the... Police, open up! Come in! You're wearing a towel! Yeah, I always <laughs> wear a towel when I read this stuff. You want some tea? Hey, what's that smell? Would you like cream with that? You're coming downtown with me now. Well, hey, hey, man. I, I just got to welcome Scott Papacuri to the show here. Get me out of these cuffs, okay? Can I put on some clothes? And now, Scott Papacuri is on the rock. Uh, the huh? radio station. Oh, you got to <laughs> stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get this kind of treatment anywhere else you go, do you, Scott? Love me, hate me, just make sure it's about me and I'm interested. It's uh, everything you wanted to know about Scott Papakuri, as you <clears throat> heard from that and you don't know. It has a lot to do with crack. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that he, he was uh, a very high-paid uh, morning radio personality. And, and then he was nowhere for a while. But he didn't start out as a comedian. We're going to go through all of that history. But while we're, while we're here, what are you doing now? Um, You're not doing time, right? No, no. Okay. I'll be, and that's going to be funny. Uh, my hit single, Search My Ass, I will be singing later. <laughs> it goes out to the corrections officers over at Hartford County Correctional Center. But uh, actually, uh, I've got two shows lined up since I was coming up here. Yep. This Saturday, December 1st, I'm at CJ's in Naugatuck. Uh, you can give them a call at 203-565-5500. And then on Saturday, December 15th, I'm at the Millennium Theater, which is uh, actually above the Polish National Home. I don't care about the venue. Just put people in it. That's on 4 Olden Avenue in Enfield, Connecticut. And uh, go to my website, www.soulaboutme.com. Maintained by NRG Networks. You can find all this out. And uh, the good thing is it's a one-man comedy assault. There's no opening act because I'd rather do an hour and a half than bring some hack in to do 20. I love your website name. It's all about me.com. You, you That's sell, what like, it's about. T-shirts and, and, yeah. and like videos, and it's just you. It's me. It's all about me. That's what it is. It's incredibly self-absorbed. <laughs> I'm sorry. We yeah, like but it's that. honest. Yeah. yeah, no, you got a point there. I yeah, couldn't you see. Here's the thing I want to make, a point I want to make about the money that's made at these shows. All the money made at these shows... Goes to your lawyer? Goes to me. Oh. I'm not... Now, let me tell you, there's a certain amount of pride I take in that. I don't pretend it's going somewhere else and not give it. It goes straight to the Scott Epicure car insurance fund, the Scott <laughs> Epicure cell phone bill. I don't pretend to be anything I'm not, and that's the beauty of the daddy. <laughs> well, what do I get for my contribution? You get the funniest show you'll ever see. Oh, okay. See, okay. that's the whole thing. My, my take on anybody... Now, I'm having a good time with you guys, and I don't mind... You know, poking fun of me because and we will. I'm over it. I'm totally cool with it. But when it happened, it used to bother me. And then my reaction was this. To all you little morning radio guys who hide behind the time and the weather who poked fun at me, I can get clean. You can't get funny. <laughs> I think that says it all. I actually uh, caught your show, uh, I think almost two months ago at City Steam. Oh, at yeah. The brouhaha downstairs. And I didn't know. I never really look at the comedians. I just like going and watching. Right. So I'll, you know, make my reservation. I'll call up and I'll go down there. And all of a sudden I see it's you. And this is pretty fresh. About how long after the whole it was incident? It, it was fresh in my the mind. I was, still, I was still bitter. I had said some pretty awful things about you on the air. I had talked about smoking crack and not getting your job back and, you know, all this stuff. And, and I'm sitting there two, one table away from the stage and you're heckling everybody. You're just giving everybody a hard time, and you're asking everybody what they do. They're like, yeah, what do you do there, fatso? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> giving everybody a hard time, and I'm sitting there with my head, my hat pulled down over my ass going, oh, my God, I hope he doesn't ask me what I do, because I hope you didn't hear what I said. You know, it was, I was sweating. Well, 
Well, here's the thing that people have to understand. Before I came here, I was New York's 1996 Comedian of the Year. Before I even came here, I reached levels of success that no one in this market will ever see. So you have to be up to fall down. What am I doing now? Just gonna become doing my thing. I'm doing comedy. Go got back a, up again. I got a hot new girlfriend. That's all I care about. Comedy, yeah, my thanks, girlfriend. Thanks for bringing your hot girlfriend here. Well, well, you, you yeah. should look at her. Uh, you pull, that's oh. all I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at, no I'm problem. Looking at Liz. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, that was the thing. I let go. It used to be my ex fiance and Kiss. Now it's stand up and my girlfriend. I moved on. And if you have, here's the thing. If people out there, they're like, oh my god, what happened? To that? Unless I owe you money, my arrest has no effect on your life. <laughs> okay. If I owe you money, I understand. But other than that, get over it. Go back. See, now that I'm gone, Connecticut has to go back to what they did before I came. Like, like watch a women's basketball game. Get over it. <laughs> I have. That's all I have to well, say about even, that. Even though uh, we've all gotten over it, we're all going to talk about it, though. Oh, Come, no, we're going to talk about it. Coming up, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I remember. We got the original article from the newspaper. Yep. We're gonna, you can uh, dispute and or agree with anything in that article. Do you know why I have that article, by the way? Uh, no, why? Because I'm suing them. Oh, really? That's defamation of character and slander. There's not any really thing in there that's true. And I was not drunk. I was on crack. Believe me, when you're on crack, you remember everything. <laughs> oh, we got a lot to talk about. Oh, we got a lot to talk about oh, with Scott oh, Peppin' yeah. Curry coming up on The Rock. Here's your WCCC commuter crash report. This one's brought to you by Audi. Suddenly, every ride's exciting. The all-new Audi A4 with special lease rates for the end of November. Your Audi dealer can help you get behind the wheel of a powerful A4 3.0 with road gripping quattro all-wheel drive. Call 1-800-NEW-AUDI for your nearest Connecticut dealer. Road rage rating right now is at 2. 2! Two. 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 Southbound 91, northbound 91, okay. Uh, no problems or delays. Westbound 84 slows across. Uh, actually, is a good drive across the Bulky Bridge. Make new way out in the West Hartford. Eastbound tight coming in 46 and into the downtown tunnel. Eastbound did have an accident earlier this afternoon at exit 37. That is now clear. You might be tapping the brakes as you make your way through there. I'm the Rhino on the Rock, 106.9 WCCC. So there's a lot of different things you can do to lose weight. I can think of one that uh, isn't necessarily good for you. Crack. Smoking crack? Crack. How does David Crosby <laughs> maintain that weight, being a cocaine addict? See, I don't, that's my question. I don't know. But How are you a so fat cocaine addict? He does so much of it, maybe it doesn't affect him anymore. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work. What does work is body solutions, though. Don't smoke crack, take body solutions. Even Scott will tell you that. Yeah, or try my new diet called Stop Eating, You Fat Bastard. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That works also. <laughs> uh, body solutions. New clothes sold separately. Call 1-800-416-3995. Uh, tell them Rhino from CCC told you to call. They'll hook you up with 20% off. 1-800-416-3995. That's 1-800-416-3995. Oh, man. Check this out. It's Rock 106.9 WCCC. Rob Zombie. You can see him live. Live. And uh, he's going to be live. That. With Ozzy and Mudvayne, December 13th at the Hartford Civic Center. It's the Merry Mayhem Tour. And, I mean, if you're into the Ozzy this weekend, it's unbelievable. A to Ozzy. A to Ozzy. Every Ozzy song there is will start it at noon on Saturday. Plus, of course, you can get tickets to see the Merry Mayhem Tour. We're going to be the only station that's going to be there with you. Nickelback was in there, too. Uh, and we have a special guest host today. <clears throat> As you know, Kevin, the afternoon guy, not here. But Scott Pepicuri is today. Uh, for those who don't know the history of Scott, <clears throat> he was uh, I don't know the radio station. Except he didn't talk like that. Yeah, Everybody hey, is. how you doing? We're going to tell you the time and the weather and play you a song and hope I never have to give an opinion of my own because I simply don't have one. <laughs> it's incessant time. It's the time all the time. <laughs> Every time I open my mouth, it's the time. It's the time, time, time. It's 4.30, 30 minutes after 4, 30 minutes before 5, one hour and a half before 6. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Scott, uh, well, the story is, and you read it in the newspaper, that... Uh, Scott was now. This is the way I remember. Before I even look at the article, this is this is the way I remember it. You uh, were having an argument with your girlfriend. You were very loud. Cops knocked on your door. You opened the door wearing only a towel. Your schlong is hanging out. You're smoking crack. Is that basically what happened? The only truth to the story is that I was arrested while wearing a towel. In fact, I was let out like David Lee Roth in the Panama video. <laughs> but other than that, what happened was I was, uh, again, Robert Downey Jr. and I call this a victimless crime. I was smoking crack in my bedroom watching porno because to me, crack and porno is like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and what happens? Two fat, well, sometimes you can use them. Two fat, bald cops walk in, are yeah. there any other kind, walk in. I didn't let them in. The door was open. I'm not one of these. At that moment, I wasn't one of these crackheads who locks the door, puts the chair behind it, and stares out the peephole. I was busy. So my uh, ex-fiance happened to be walking the dog, 
So she left the door open. These cops walk in, and they said that I let them in. I was wearing a towel, and I offered them drinks. They walked in. I was wearing a towel, and of course I offered them food when they were in there. They're fat. They're cops. Why not? You know, I've got lots of food. I'm on crack. I'm obviously not eating. I've got plenty of food. So, yeah, I did offer them food, and I tried to be cordial because they were in my living room. Who called the police? It was my ex fiance's friend. And that's why she's my ex fiance. Aha. Uh -huh. See, because in my, I come from an Italian family from New York, and we have learned one thing there's no situation so bad a policeman can't make worse. The police are never called in any of my family problems or any of the problems in my neighborhood. And if they were, they'd You're be sleeping. with a sit down. Yeah, no, it's, I'm not making believe I'm in the mafia. I'm not, but we <laughs> learned to not call the police. The police are busy. They're sleeping behind the elementary school. Let sleeping cops lie. Don't wake them. If you wake them, now they're up. They might have to fill out a form. They're going to arrest you. <laughs> Do you now, what, did you go to jail? Yeah. Did you go to trial? You no. Went to jail uh, did they have any reason to search? No, 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 what happened was my ex-fiancé allowed them to search, which is another reason why she's my ex-fiancé. These are all things, if, if, if my current girlfriend, I'm not saying that I smoke crack now, but if the cops came in and said, can we search your house, my current girlfriend would say, get the boot out of our house. And then she'd talk to me about it after. This other girl, a little intimidated so, by fat, white, bald men. So they, really? So, <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Yeah. So they, they uh, found... They found crack, you're in jail, you go to court, what happens? No, here's the thing. A lot of people think that life is like a law and order episode where everything gets wrapped up in an hour. The court process, again, is a never-ending pride-swallowing siege that I will never fully tell you about, <laughs> but I will try. Uh, what happened was I kept going back to court, except I kept using. So, and I wasn't lying about it. You know, they take my urine and it was dirty. I couldn't stop using because now I live in Connecticut and I don't even have this job anymore. So now I'm watching women's basketball. Now I'm a Connecticut person. I've got to do even more drugs. Plus, I've, I've got the 401k money to go through. I've got all that. Right. So what happened was the, the judge, who was a very fair man, he got sick of me showing up not, not clean. And he kept sending me for little stints, three days, eight days, five days. But when I went to jail, it was I was signing inmates' clothing. I was singing songs, doing concerts. It was just the only problem about jail is there's no food, and you know you have to no crack. No, there's no is, drugs. No, there's drugs. There's probably lots there's of There's more drugs in jail. And how do they get in there? By fat, white, bald corrections officers. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> the reason I didn't do the drugs is because you know I decided I wasn't going to do the drugs anymore, and I don't do drugs anymore. But. Um, what happened was in jail, you can't smoke cigarettes. I don't know who they're protecting it with that. And also, people think you have sex, like you're somebody's bitch in jail. Only if you want to. I mean, it's boring enough, you may consider it. I didn't do that, but, you know, hard time is where thought? the sex happens. Did I give it some thought? Not really. I was in a dorm. It really wasn't you're a place. Big gay. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, uh, what happened was, I had gone to jail, and there was a little corrections officer there who I had apparently kicked out of a show a year earlier at the Hookie Lao. And he was angry about it. Now, his job, and I'm not kidding, you guys probably haven't been in jail, I hope you don't go, uh, is to search your ass. Oh, the guy so. searched my ass. And I'm not kidding, he searched the ass. I mean, if I have the ass searching job in a men's prison, I turn my head, I go, you know, go ahead. Whatever you got in there, fine with me, I'm not on the floor anyway. Did he have one of those minor hats with a flashlight on top of it? No, I didn't go that far, but he did have the gloves <laughs> and he was concerned. Uh, so he came uh, in and he, he came gentle? into my... He, he didn't... Uh, he searched it. There's a difference between searching and doing what we in New York call the plunger. In New York, you get the plunger. In, in, in Connecticut, there's just a slight search. And what I thought, you know that guy, Abner Louima? You no. hear about that guy? He got $9 million. Oh, that's the guy that they ass raped with the, with the uh, plunger. plunger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've paid women to stick a plunger in my ass, okay? I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> so what happens is he comes into my cell. It's about midnight, and he opens up the door, and he goes, look at you. You thought you were such a big shot, big star. Look at you now. You're in jail. What do you have to say for yourself? I woke up out of a sound sleep, and I said one sentence. It's the only time I ever affected a man in a blue uniform's life. I looked at him. I said, you search men's asses. And he realized what he did for a living, and he walked away in horror. So I wrote this song, and I sang it. It was kind of like Elvis in Jailhouse Rock. There's probably about 500 guys that I sang it to. And it goes like this. This goes out to all you corrections officers out there. Listen to me. I'm Scott Papacuri. I'm an inmate now, and I'm no longer free. But there are people in the jail who work here. They claim to make over 40000 a year. And when they say stuff to me when they walk on past, I just remind them. You search my ass! <laughs> and this was a big hit. <laughs>
I, I see that, you know, when you go to jail, you become a rap star. No, what ha everyone does what they do. Most guys in jail are in jail for nonviolent crimes because p the guy said to me, the cop, because we want you to give up your drug dealer. And I said, okay, I will, because I've seen enough NYPD Blue to know I can get a soda out of this. So they get me the soda. <laughs> I drink the soda. And now he says, okay, I want you to tell me your drug dealer. And I did. This is what I said to him. I said, if you go in Hartford, where we are right now, if you go on every street corner, there's a black guy. And that guy sells crack. But you won't ever go there because he'll blow your fat white head off. And then I got thrown back in my cell and whatever. But the thing was, I never thought I was a loser. I never didn't hurt anyone. I was by myself. It was a victimless crime. Is it illegal? I did time. I paid my debt. Remember, if I don't owe you money, why do you care? But the thing is, it's like I, I got a lot of free stuff from being on the air. But in this situation, my fame just totally screwed me. Right. I never would have been treated the way I was if they weren't writing about it every day, which is a credit to how famous I was and, B, how slow this town is. Yeah, but well, it looks yeah. like your mouth got you out of an ass search anyway. Well, the ass search. So you got that going <laughs> yeah. for you, which is nice. <laughs> Well, we've got the the original article. We'll be getting to the article in, in just about 10 minutes, and uh, we'll go through and find out exactly what was true and what was not true. It's the 106.9 WCCC. Going deeper because we can. Seven Dust, Animosity. We did follow and we did praise. Pagosi and Kevin, the Afternoon Guy Show. Uh, today, our special guest host, Scott Papakuri. The Rock CCC. Hey, I got a question for Scott. What's up? Hey, Scott. Did you smoke crack because of uh, the deal with the music on the other station? What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I smoke crack because of the boredom in Connecticut. When oh. I found out that 10,000 people watch women play basketball, I said I'd rather smoke crack. Did you ever get to bang that chick on that other radio station? No, nah, no, nah, I never did. I tried. Oh, you tried? Yeah, I, well, I, I banged most of the women in Connecticut before I was done, but some did escape. Because uh. I, I started up a charity program. Did you ever hear about it? No. Yeah, I did a lot of charity work with single mothers. Oh. And this is the single mother capital of the world. Nothing harder than having a... 32-year-old hot grandmother you behind a dumpster. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you, dude. You gotta take it easy, man. They're single moms. They got kids. Listen, you think it's like everyone thinks that there's this much road work and this many single mothers all around the country? It doesn't exist. So what, though? I mean, they're, they're just trying to raise kids. Give them a break. Hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to not have kids with them. I'm just, you know, <laughs> my dream girl is a girl who will, you know, come in, do what she has to do, go get a pizza, do what she has to do, and then leave. No kids, though. No, the kids, I had a daycare center set up at the hotel. Jeez, <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, Scott, we, we, we have the original article, and, and you know, uh, uh, right here on in this very studio, we just had the most fun. Oh, yeah. What happened, it was great. Well, you guys are actually funny, so I, would, I wouldn't I mind you doing it. It's these time and weather guys who, who have no personality, who just read the article and make fun of me. I feel sorry for you. I think they should be arrested. They're paid to be funny, and they're not. Well, well, focusing on arresting me. Well, I, uh, I'm going to do some things in the article. I want to read some stuff and then get your reaction sure. to it. The headline was, Radio DJ Arrested on Drug Charges, which, of course, catches our attention. That's true. Scott? Papakuri, a raunchy shock jock. That was offensive. What? Because I'm not a shock jock. I'm funny. There's yeah, a big you're difference. Just like a guy. Yeah. Uh, on a popular, well, not anymore. Hartford area <laughs> morning show. Hey, isn't that funny? They were popular. You left. No, they're not. Yeah, a coincidence. Uh, I think not. May know how to host a uh, radio program, but he, he didn't do so well hosting two Manchester cops. Yeah, that's Clanchester, as in Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> uh, the they were summoned to his apartment by his roommate. Is that true? Uh, roommate, uh, roommate was my fiance because I don't live with a man. I'm Scott Papakuri. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, it was a roommate's friend, the fiance's no. friend, who is now uh, never was my friend, and that's why fiance is ex fiance. Uh, you were arrested on charges that you had crack cocaine in your bedroom. Is that true? That was true. A lot of it. Actually, you know what a great part about it? I had more of it in my wallet, and when they released me on Monday, it was still in my wallet. No, they never found the crack oh, in my wallet. That's so. right. They didn't look there. Because it wasn't girl. food. He was fired <laughs> from his job uh, Monday. Uh, you know That was true. And, and we had a lot of fun with this. The station's general manager said uh, Papakuri's dismissal was not related to the events of the weekend. They yeah. just fired you. It was an amazing coincidence. Yeah, it was the biggest star they ever had at their station, but it was a coincidence. No, I don't have and any they were, bitterness. They were just going to fire you on that Monday. Yeah. And as a met, you know, I was going to call him in and fire him, but you know, then he got he got arrested over the weekend for crack. So, but I decided I'd fire him anyway. Yeah, they did what they felt they had to do. A lot of people yeah, say they did what they had to, to do. Lied to the newspaper. Wait a second, though. They read this article on the air. 
No, no, they, oh, they okay. never mentioned they, me they, they again. They totally skimmed over the whole thing. You were gone, arrested I was gone. memory. See, the reason why, if I would have been... There's no balls in that, you know what I'm saying? If I would have been arrested for cocaine, I would still have my job. The word crack scares white people, yet it's white people that are smoking it, but we'll get back to that later. <laughs> uh, the word crack scares people. They think it's... I mean, what do you think? You think Michael Irvin, when he's in a hotel with three strippers, isn't smoking crack? It's all crack. No one snorts coke. I, I bought it. I bought it for the girls. Coke's yeah. too expensive. <laughs> it, I never did it before in my life, but, you know, they wanted some, so... Exactly. That was his story, and, you know, I believed him when he said that. Well, the thing is, people don't understand. I mean, I spent a lot of time here in Hartford. It's easier to buy crack in Hartford than it is to buy a pack of cigarettes. It takes 10 to 15 minutes for me to buy a pack of cigarettes between the people playing lottery tickets, the guy not understanding English. If I buy crack, I barely have to stop my car. Oh, you, you what, half a block from here, right? You, I mean, this, in this neighborhood... You know, I, why be... Uh, why, why speculate? Here, uh, can you, I, can you buy crack half a block here, from here? Yeah, right here on Huntington Avenue. Right hey. here. It's, it's less than two blocks away. Here, right hey. here. Hold on. Watch this. Hold on. You watch can this. Can I get a run? Yo, Taquan. Yeah, you got one? Taquan. <laughs> Taquan's got it. <laughs> Hold on. Here he comes. Look. No, no. He's kidding, Taquan. Hold on. Let me just speak in his language. Yo, yo. There ain't nothing going on. Feel me? All right. He's all Feel right. Feel me? Yeah, feel me. I learned uh, it in jail. Yeah, you gotta go get there. the book. Feel me. I learned it in jail. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Curry uh, had good manners to invite the police in when they arrived at his home. He even offered them a drink. Was that true? No. Again, what happened was they walked in. I was in the bedroom. Uh, taking so care of my business. So the door was open and they just walked in? No, the door was not open. The door was unlocked. These fat, white, bald cops <laughs> came in and opened the door. And I was trying, you know, they're in there. I figure they're fat. I've got food. Why not offer them some? If only you had some donuts. Yeah. Actually, I mean, now. Now, oh, you know okay. what I offered them, which they almost took, was NyQuil. It's not about donuts anymore. <laughs> Sleeping behind the elementary school, you need NyQuil. But it was his choice of dress. He wore only a towel. Yes, I still, to this day, walk around naked in my apartment with my girlfriend. That, we are always naked. Why should I wear clothes? open in front. That seemed a bit odd. Well, I, I don't think house, it was open. Right? It was my house. They walked in, and I was naked. And if I, if you were hung like me, you wouldn't be embarrassed like that. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not embarrassed. I, I, I didn't flash them either. Were they looking at my crotch? They probably, they probably found me attractive. I mean, I was like 105 pounds at that point. Police said Papakuri, flushed and sweating profusely, seemed not to notice that he was walking around naked. No, I noticed I was walking around in my apartment, and I didn't care. I wasn't walking around a hotel hallway. But the thing is, was I sweating? I was sweating like Whitney Houston in the airport terminal. Of course I was sweating. <laughs> drugs make you sweat. When someone is sweating, they're either fat or on drugs. Or both. <laughs> uh, did, so did you ever think of being a cop? Actually, I thought of being a cop because um, I wanted to get my hands on the best drugs and have the fringe benefit of not having to pay for it. But I'm not fat and bald, and I don't know how to sleep in a car. you got to be fair, though. They're not all fat and bald. I mean, there's some there's I some haven't seen one that, that wasn't. That work out. Oh, I, come if on. there's a cop, tell, give the address. If there's a cop <laughs> out there who's not either sleeping right now or fat and bald... Come here to this station, oh, and we will give no, you a CD. No, 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 no you can't Pick him that. up when he's on the way <laughs> yeah, out, okay? Because, exactly. uh, you know, personally, we like you guys a or lot. Or call him up, 525 yeah. WCCC, and yeah. tell him you're not fat, because I'm not on your side with that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, if I was you, I'd kiss their ass, too. But I'm not you. <laughs> Listen, I do my... No, wait. Uh, I'm, I'm a perfectly good citizen. I, I no, exactly. love the cops. Sure. Love Policeman is our friend. Run all that stuff. Policemen in New York are heroes. Policemen in Manchester sleep behind the Buckland Mall. That's all I'm saying. Police... I'm not saying I hate police. I don't hate the police. I just hate the two policemen who came into my house. Oh, okay. That's more fair. And they're fat and bald. That's so to me, every fair. cop is fat and bald. But most are. Don't kid yourself. Uh, the, the station called Pepe Curry a talented broadcaster. Well, that's a given. But, but said he had shown sufficient disregard for station policies to warrant his dismissal. This is when they fired you. Mm -hmm. be, be, he was arrested? You know, I was just going to fire him. <laughs> Gee, what a coincidence. Mm. Uh, Papa Curry was briefly suspended last year for what the station characterized as grossly insensitive comments about the plane crash that killed John F. Kennedy Jr. and his wife. Yeah, did, you do, thing, did you do a morning show? Yeah. Are you supposed to be funny? 
It, it was very funny. The thing was, the point I was trying to make, a lot of people take the Kennedy stuff personally here because they think that because they're drunk and sexually irresponsible that that actually makes them members of the Kennedy family. <laughs> what I suggest to you is to go to the Hartford co uh, Kennedy compound, even with a bottle of Chivas. You're not getting in. You have nothing to do with the Kennedys. And what I said was basically the Kennedys have the lifespan of the career of an MTV VJ. And if I was a Kennedy, I wouldn't fly a single-engine plane with a broken ankle at night when I don't know how to fly. So you my would angle, if your wife said, you better fly me there. Well, I think that he, you know, my angle was basically, a woman said to me, she said, I felt like I grew up, like I was related to John John because I grew up watching her on television. I said, lady. I grew up watching what's happening. I never felt like I was related to rerun. I try to give you a sense of perspective to bring you back to reality in this Kennedy world where there's such great people. They're drunk murderers. That's all they are. The notoriously vulgar. That was another one comedian. that bothered me. Notoriously vulgar. I'm not Jay Leno or Jerry Seinfeld because I'm funny. But I'm not notoriously vulgar either. I'm just funny. And I challenge you to come see me at CJ's this Saturday <laughs> night, December 1st, in Naugatuck. And December 15th, I'll be at the Polish National Home. We're calling it the Millennium Theater. It's on 4 Alden Avenue in Enfield. All this stuff is on my website, www.itsallaboutme.com, maintained by NRG Networks. The notoriously smooth Scott <laughs> Sorry. I got to get my plug, plug right in there. All right, one one last thing here. Uh, perhaps hoping for a break. Oh, Papa thank Curry you, Bacosi. Asked one of the officers Friday if he knew of his radio fame. The officer's reply was a sharp, I listen to Imus. First of all, it's illegal to quote policemen in articles. You have to take things from the police report. Second of all, it's a fantasy. I want to give you exactly what happened. All I right. want you out there to picture a guy who hasn't eaten in seven days, who hasn't slept in five days, who's wearing a towel, who's sweating like Marlon. Marlon Brando looking at an open refrigerator. Okay? I want you to picture that. Now, this guy is kissing the cops' asses. He's offering them food because he's Scott Pepe Curie, the radio host, who has done so much for them on the air. And I really did at that point for this one purpose. The one time when this happens, I'd be let go. I find out I'm not going to be let go. And instead of saying, do you know who I am, this is what I said. And I'll try to eliminate the F word, oh, which came out every other word. It went like this. Do you have any idea who I am? No, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea what I've done for the, sh for the Hartford Police Department? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? And that's when they pulled out their guns on me. I'm wearing a towel. The look in my eyes. I'm 105 pounds soaking wet. They pulled out their guns and gave me a breach of peace. In New York, they would have been real men and just given me the plunger and laughed at me. But these guys were actually afraid of me. What kind of a man are you? Well, you go into a man's house who's wearing a towel. He obviously has nothing on him. And if you can't beat the crap out of me, you got some problems. Okay? They never said I listened to Imus. That's a fantasy. Why did they try to make this story interesting? It was interesting enough. Try to add some, some stories when you're talking about schools closing in Connecticut when it rains. Try to do something like that. This didn't need any fluff. I listened to so Imus. So what did the reporter get I listened to Imus from then? He, he got it when he called he, them back? I don't know where he got it from. I hope he got it from the policeman. That'll make my lawsuit better. And if he got it from himself, that'll make it better against them. Nobody under 65 listens to Imus anyway, so it's no. got to be why. No one listens to Imus. That's ridiculous. Like listening to Gary Craig. Hey, today I'm going to call someone up and do a. I'm going to pretend I'm someone else. I've been doing it for 40 years. I've been kicked out of 50 cities. Hey, Scott Papacuri to Gary Craig. It's better to burn out than to do phony phone calls, you hack. <laughs>Rock 106.9 WCCC. Bush, Machine Head, Incubus in there. Uh, nice to know you, Def Leppard, Limp Biscuit, Bacosi and Kevin, the afternoon guy, our special guest host today, Scott Papakiri. Uh, the Rock CCC. Hold on, it's live from the Manchester Police Department. Would you flush your stash? That's the biggest. <laughs> that's the biggest water pipe I ever heard. The Rock CCC. Yeah, cracky there. If you ever been to New York City with a kick-ass limo driver. Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing, man? You miss me, don't you? I tell you, what the hell happened? I read it all about the paper, man. I oh, this was a guy who used to drive me in a limo. He didn't know how to drive a limo, but I didn't have to pay, so you you can't it be choosing. Good. Yeah, you can't <laughs> choose it at all. Hey, did you st did time, you stop man. for crack on your way to New York? No, but we did stop at a bunch of porn stops. They wanted me to get a hooker one time. And I said, look, and I said, Scott, there's cops all over here. He said, yeah, yeah, pull over here. And we pulled over to some porn star. He whacked it in some store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to get it out, man. You did. I know I did. Again, another one of my victimless crimes.
Hey, I did it every morning. Sometimes I wouldn't sleep for two weeks, but I'd show up. Hey, that's all. It's nothing wrong with that. It's all about you, right? Hey, if it wasn't yeah, for me, it would be all about you. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah, the Rock CCC. Hey, Scott there. Yo, yeah. what's up? Hey, why don't you just stop smoking crack? It seems like it cause all your problems there. I don't smoke crack anymore. Stop bitching about it. I'm not no, bitching you know, about it. I'm telling you what happened. I stay out of trouble. I don't do any. I stay out of trouble. I don't have the cops coming over to my house. Well, that's cool. Good for you, man. You probably live a very dull life. I'm an entertainer. I expect I my entertainers so to be smoking crack and banging three oh, women. Come on. But that's come me. On. The cops aren't going to bother you if you're not doing anything wrong. That's right. Hey, live in that world. Live in your f***ing fantasy world. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How you doing? What's up? Not much. I have to say Scott is very right in regards to saying he did charity work for single mothers. He banged my ex-roommate. Yeah, well, who was that? <laughs> you remember the friggin' blonde-haired chick that used to work at the mobile station on 75? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my old roommate. Oh, she was great. Oh, she's a Give now to uh, Kim over on exit 38, the mobile. Stop over there. She sells cigarettes and gas, and she's just a great girl. <laughs> she's a friggin' bitch. Hey. Hey. Well, that's why I took care of her in the second hole. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what man. it's about. If you're naughty, you may have to get punished. You know, I, you brought your, your girlfriend with you, Liz, who's been very quiet soon. Can I, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it a serious question? Well, I mean, you, you just heard the phone calls, which are kind of like an insight into the past life of Scott Papakiri. Yes, we heard about whacking. We heard about the back of the limo. We heard about the porn. We heard about the second hole. <laughs> I want to know, I, does this stuff surprise you? Is this new information? Did he tell you all this stuff? No, he didn't tell me this stuff, but I'm not shocked by it. I'm You're just not hoping surpri that surprised at all. No, but I'm just hoping that he sold his wild oats and all that's done with. It is, yeah. So, right, so none of this stuff shocks you? Not really. No? Surprisingly, I... Are you, are you secretly thinking, boy, you know, I'd love to take a limo ride with him and maybe stop and get some porn and a hooker? Um, truthfully... Thinking about it. This, He's thinking about thinking it. Thinking about it, yeah. I'll admit, I, we've talked about it. Yeah, we... we uh, you talked about getting a hooker? We're free thinkers in that yeah. aspect. So... It's, I'm not afraid This of could it. give a whole new meaning to the $3,000 threesome then. Goodness. Except that, yeah. Well, it, <laughs> most it of my threesomes three cost $3,000 to get them going. Just go to the back of the Hartford Current. If you got three grand, you'll have a $3,000 threesome. But, uh, no, the thing is, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't hide anything. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, how much can you say? The radio lets me get it all out, and it's all in the past, and, uh... Well, hey. according to her, I don't think it's all in the past. I think you got a, a, a whole new uh, um, career. But it's <laughs> just as long as we're open and honest with each other. Yeah, we're as long as you're in the room, you can do whatever you want. We're only naughty together. That's the rule. Yeah, okay. It's okay to be naughty. Just don't so lie. We're talking Scott Papakuri. We're talking the new girlfriend, <laughs> perhaps a couple of old girlfriends. Hey, you're in Hartford. There's plenty of mobile stations that you can stop and find somebody along the way. Hey, you drive up and down Hartford, there's plenty of women that will service you. <laughs> the Rock 106.9 WCCC. The Kid Rock on The Rock. Also, some tool in there. Kevin, the afternoon guy, not with us today. In fact, we're, we're just uh, uh, heading for phone calls. We're, we're running around. We got Scott Papakuri in here. And poor Kevin, we didn't get a chance to put him on the radio. So... We'll talk to you twice tomorrow, if we have a chance. Guest host today, Scott Papakuri. The Rock CCC. Yeah, I want to fucking comment on what Scott Papakuri said about the Manchester Police Department. You go right sure, go ahead. ahead. Well, first of all, I want to say you're a idiot. Uh-huh. <laughs> and second of all, it's one of the best the police departments around. And if you weren't doing crack, uh, you wouldn't have gotten caught. Well, if I was doing a violent crime, I wouldn't have been caught. It's, well, they it's focus on nonviolent crime. You can't deny that. I mean, that's well, ridiculous. You're right. It's not a nonviolent crime, but obviously drugs are illegal for a reason. And that is a crime. And to call them lazy and say they sleep behind the Buckland Hills Mall. Well, go behind the Buckland Hills Mall, Hills Mall right now or let by me, the elementary school and tell me if you don't see a cop sleeping okay, there. Okay, let me tell you something. I work at the Buckland Hills Mall. Do you? They don't sleep up here. Hey, quit bragging. Brother, there's nothing I care less about than you. <laughs> oh, oh, man, you're cold, man. <laughs> Don't step to daddy. Just show daddy some love. I'll make you look foolish. Verbally, I'm Mike Tyson and you're Gary Coleman.
So now that your radio career is not uh, uh, going, though, though, you know, if somebody listened here, they'd probably hire you. Uh, we can't afford you because you actually make real money. Uh, where are you making the real money these days? Actually, this Saturday, December 1st, I'll be doing my one-man comedy assault at CJ's. It's on New Haven Road in Naugatuck. Showtime's 9 o'clock. You can give them a call at 203 203- Five six five fifty five hundred and closer to Christmas, nothing celebrates the Christmas quite like me. The Millennium <laughs> Theater at the Polish National Home. It's on Four Alden Avenue in Enfield, Connecticut. I'll be there Saturday, December fifteenth. Uh, give them a call at eight six zero seven four five five three nine zero. Tickets will be available for both shows on the night of the show. You can just go to my website www. It's all about me and my good friends NRG Networks of Waterbury, who do a great job maintaining it. Uh, you know, uh, we are we are excited that you're going to arrive today because today is d- dumbass Wednesday. Oh yeah, and and we usually do dumbass things, uh, but uh, this is kind of a two parter. First, we have a present for you. Before okay. I tell you the second half of oh, Dumbass wrapped. Wednesday. Yeah, uh, I think Jersey wrapped it because Rube couldn't figure it out. It's wrapped in a, just describe this for you, a sort of pastel teddy bear wrapping paper. With Very roses. nice. If yeah. I was my mother, I'd <laughs> save this paper. Okay. But I'm not. Okay, we're going to open this up now. Very exciting. Oh, my God. Look at this, honey. <laughs> it's a crack pipe. It's, no, it's, it doesn't have to be used for crack. It, be, it could be used for tobacco. That's or for tobacco use only. Or, right, you can't call, go into a, uh, a head shop and call it a pi, a bong. They'll kick you out. It's a, yep. it's a, it's a tobacco pipe. Or and it's pipe. dice and a roach clip and a screen. It's <laughs> What's from, all that stuff for? Let's give a plug. The Skeleton's Closet over at 10 Dog Lane, Stores, Connecticut. Uh, thank you very much. This is uh, this is tremendous. See, we were trying to think of a way. <laughs> Let me explain. Yeah, go ahead. See, Dumbass Wednesday, we do stupid stuff. Uh, we've uh, snorted pepper. Right. We, we smoked uh, banana peels. When I say we, of course, I mean everybody but me. Yeah, me and Holden right, right. Johnson. Yeah. And so, so we were thinking, geez, Scott Papacure is going to be here on Dumbass Wednesday. And I, I will say before we start this that we did abandon this idea. And we decided to give you that. So we said, you know what we should do? We should smoke crack. But... <laughs> <laughs> it would be easy enough to get. We're in Hartford. Yeah. But then we said, well, we can't really do that. So we were thinking, what could we do? Mm-hmm. And so then I have to say that Rhino came up with this idea, not me. <laughs> Rhino said, well, if we could get a couple of hairs off my ass, we could smoke that. So it would be like smoking crack. Oh, nice. It would stink, though. Think about it. Think about yeah. the, the smell of burning hair. And I'm... then the smell of burning... So, so Single bear. The burning ass like, hair. That's next level. It would be like smoking crack. Right. And so I looked at him like he was smoking crack. Right. And said, you want to smoke your ass hair? And then we said, let's just give Scott the pipe and bag it. So that's what This we is did. great. Thank you so much. You know what? A lot of times people will, you know, I could easily give this, you know, to my grandmother. But, you're but, re, you're going to re-gift the... Yeah, uh, you know, it's, oh, called, it's called the boomerang. But uh, what, what I'm actually going to do is, is, is save this. And uh, I really, I think it has, and there's also a dice in there. Well, it's kind That's of a, attached to the a roach clip Oh, the die. roach clip, the die. Roach clip, die. Very nice. See, and that uh, way you can set it on the table and leave it burning, you know, your tobacco cigarette. You know, this box, if I was still smoking crack, would be very nice to hold my utensils. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm no longer smoking crack, but it's always good to have nice boxes. So this is a, thank you so much. <laughs> Most radio stations in so give, many ways they give you movie passes, concert tickets, or CDs. No, not this us. is much more applicable in the real world, and I, I really appreciate it. I'm not kidding. Thank you so much. Well, remember it, it came about because Rhino wanted to smoke his own ass hair, <laughs> and uh, it's gifts like these that have me say Merry Christmas. <laughs> WCCC's six second profile. Bon Scott is currently decomposing. This has been WCCC's six second profile. Well. Give or take a second. The Rock. The year was 1998. It was Game 3 of the World Series. I was smoking crack in a hotel room in the Berlin Turnpike when one Scott Broches stepped up to the plate. And the greatest closer at that time in baseball walked into this theme song. How offensive to me it was that he would take this song and try to walk in. The World Series MVP, Scott Brocious, hit a home run, won that game, they swept, and now he's retiring. So, Scott Brocious, I know no one cares but me. This goes out to you. I got the system of a down, chop suey. Scott Papakiri is our uh, guest host today, while Kevin, the afternoon guy, goes to booby bars instead of recovering at home like he yeah, should be. Yeah, what's up with that? Hey, I don't know. That that's guy. A, one of the best ways to recover is to excite yourself, and, and, uh, and that can work. I respect him. 
I don't know. He, the, the guy isn't good enough to come into work, but he's good enough to go out and get all liquored up mm-hmm. and watch boobies. I'm just thinking it's hey, not hard to come here and sit in the chair and chat with us. He's in a lot of pain, and he needs medicine, and sometimes that medicine runs out, and it's time to do what the Kennedys do. Even a pompous former <laughs> crack addict can come here and sit in the chair and talk to us. That's right. See what I'm saying? I'm drained, though. I need a nap. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, is unbelievable. All show. we do is talk to people. We, it's, 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 it never stops. It was amazing. It's huh? funny because people come out of the woodwork that, that listen to CCC, but they haven't called us. They enjoy the show, but you pissed them off so much, they felt the need to call up and just scream at you. That's the beauty of being a radio personality, is people will tell you they hate you, and they don't listen to you, and then they'll tell me everything I said. Mm-hmm. I said, well, well, then you obviously listen to the show. Well, I, I listen to some people that I don't like. You know what I mean? It's cool. And remember, if you don't like me, USA Today did a report. 87% of the people that don't like me were molested as children. <laughs> So remember, it wasn't me who did that to you. I'd I'd love to get some confirmation on that statistic, really. 87%. They did a poll. Uh, Appreciate you coming in today. I I just have really one personal question i got to ask you. Talk to me, Goose. Because I'm not really a drug user, you know. Right. Experimented in college. With drugs, that is. Um, Experimented So I guess guess the question I have is, is what does it feel like to smoke crack? Well, someone once asked me, did... um, when you smoke crack, does that make you want to have sex? And I said, well, eating cookies makes me want to have sex. Yeah. Uh, the initial part of the crack thing is the first hit or two is really like, wow, this is great. And then it kind of sucks after that. You're kind of chasing it and you're spending a lot of money. And uh, it, it does, it, it's just a, you just want more and you're staring out then the window. Answer the door with a towel and yeah. you're in jail. Remember, I didn't answer the door. They walked in. Oh, yeah, that's Fat, right. Fat, white, bald cops walked into my apartment. Oh, yeah. You're going to get the pissed off all over again. Easy, easy, no, no, easy. I'm just correcting. I didn't open the door. Okay. But I also wasn't staring at the people. It's, it's, a, it's a bad drug. There's better drugs out there. Kids, am I telling you to do drugs? No. But stay away from crack. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I, I guess the question was, I know I will never try crack. I know that will never happen. I was just wondering if, you know... Th- th- you had any. Y- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, if you want to find out everything about my life, come to these two shows. One is this Saturday, December 1st. It's at CJ's on New Haven Road in Naugatuck. Showtime's 9 o'clock. Info and reservations call 203-565-5500. Uh, and also, Saturday, December 15th, I'll be at the Millennium Theater, which is... Uh, now known as the Polish Deli. It's on Alden Avenue in Enfield. And their number is 860-745-5390. Go to my website. It has all my performances, everything on there, everything about me. It's ironically called www.itsallaboutme.com. And a shout-out to Dave Riley and Christina and the whole crew at NRG Networks who maintain, and our good friend Melissa from Long Island, who right now is hiding from a black man. (laughs) (laughs) But hey, who isn't? And I'd like to thank Pocosi and Ryan and everybody here for having the guts to bring me back, to not be threatened, to not care, and for me, and also credit for me, be like, who cares, we'll talk about whatever, Pocosi and I, when we talk before the show, we'll talk about whatever we want, we didn't have anything scripted, it was just fun, and that's what, we're not radio guys giving you the time and the weather looking at a show prep, okay, we're, we're just guys talking, and I hope you liked it, and if you didn't, remember you were molested. The Rock <laughs> really is the last bastion yeah. of this, decent radio in it Hartford, is. it's this only, is. show know, prep, Rhino goes, you're on! <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, getting ready for the show today, I actually spent some time on the internet and uh, looked up a whole bunch of stuff about crack cocaine. Yeah. Smoking crack can cause severe chest pain, wheezing, chronic cough, parts lift, tongue and throat, extreme hoarseness, singed eyebrows, lashes, burns on fingers, and extreme crack can cause bleeding in the lungs called crack lung. Did you get crack lung? No, I suffered job loss. <laughs> All right. Scott yeah. Pepperberry, thank you very much. It's been a good time. Tomorrow, our special guest is Osama Bin Laden. And we're going to blow his ass up. Unless you're a hermit living in a shack, brushing your teeth with, like, sticks or something.